Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. All right. I am sweating hard right now. And it's more than the fact that I just sweat. It's also because I'm nervous because I'm going to get real into like my life today when we talk about my podcast. So I hope you're ready for it. Um, I appreciate you letting me have this space, but yeah, I'm going to be, the struggle's real. I'm definitely getting hella uncomfortable, but I'm going to be confident about it. I'm going to dive right in and yeah, here we go. So I don't talk about my story much because honestly, I'm still in it, right? I'm still living it. So sometimes I really struggle and I just, I want to share a lot, but I also sometimes feel like I'm working through it. So I've overcome a lot in my life, yet I still have days where I'm spiraling back towards anxiety, emotional eating, and even depression. Like I know myself more than I've ever known myself and that's great, but that I also know that I still have things I'm struggling with. And I'm going to share with you a little bit more with you just like in hopes that you're going to find comfort in knowing you're not alone. So if you deal with anxiety, depression, um, or emotional eating, literally all of the above, you're not alone, girl. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I grew up in a really supportive and loving home. My parents taught me early on the importance of being confident, speaking up for myself. They saw that that I wasn't. I was actually pretty shy. So my dad was pretty intentional about me like being very upfront with things. However, I remember as a kid, I had a lot of separation anxiety. So I hated being away from my mom. My parents were divorced when I was young and I would get so upset. I would literally become ill. Like I would physically feel sick and I would stay home from school for more days than I was allowed. And I was even seeing doctors about it. They diagnosed me with IBS, which basically meant my stomach would get upset easily when eating certain foods. But like, that's pretty normal of everyone. My dad had a different perspective. He saw a pattern in my behavior. I would become ill or say I had a stomach ache when I was in situations I didn't feel safe or had com- like uncomfortable feelings about. So if I had anxiety around it, I was at a sleepover one night with my, my dad's girlfriend's daughter. And I called my dad late that night because I felt sick. He came to get me, and I'll never forget our talk on the way home because it still sticks to me to this day. He told me I was uncomfortable with the situation. I I have to say something. I have to speak up. He said that my mind was powerful. Sometimes we can even make ourselves sick as a way to protect ourselves in our heads. As a kid, I wasn't exactly sure what he meant, but then I started to listen. So... The next time I was in a stressful situation, I tried to listen to my body and reflect on why I was feeling this way. What was going on around me causing this stress? I still deal deal with anxiety, but I realized more about how much control my mind has over my body. And this realization has helped me stop a lot of symptoms before they break me down. Our minds can heal us or they can make us sick. We have the power to choose. Today, I choose to use my mind to heal myself and others. That's why I'm here. I choose to use my mind to create and grow and make an impact. Today, I I really want to help you with that as well. What mental blocks do you feel like are keeping you from your highest self? Seriously, I was making myself sick for so long. And I don't think I really understood it as much as a kid, but our minds are truly so powerful. It's crazy. Like, Anxiety and depression are real, absolutely real, but I also think we have a lot of control over our actions as well. And so once I started to be able to get a handle on things I could control, it made the things I couldn't control a lot more manageable. So that's something that has really, really helped me just with my life in general. And then also reminding myself that I can share my struggle in order to help others. So that's the biggest reason I want to share this with you guys is anxiety can be real. It can be real debilitating to like paralyzing almost. And I've been there. I've been to the point of like, can't breathe, curled up in a ball. Like, where am I? Like, why am I feeling this way? And yet I couldn't stop. It was like I was watching myself doing these things and still couldn't control them. And 
I know that feeling and now that I've been able to recognize things that will trigger my anxiety and trigger uh, all the emotions, I'm able to recognize like what ones I want to feel and what ones I need to control in my own time. So having control over that has helped me so much and I really want to help you with that as well. So when I get in a situation, actually, let's just start with how I, I start my day because Sometimes I wake up and feel anxiety, to be real honest. So what I've been doing is waking up and immediately when my alarm goes off, because that can cause a little bit of a burst in your heart, just crazy. I'll put my hand over my heart and I'll breathe in. Exhale. And with the exhale, I say, today's going to be a great day. And it's such a simple thing to say, right? Um, but it gets my mind in the right setting. The other thing I will do is I'll do that breath again. And then when I exhale, I say, thank you, God, for this breath. And it sounds, again, very simple. But I remind myself that I am here for a bigger purpose than myself. And I didn't have to wake up this morning, but I did. So I want to make the very most of it. And that has helped my mind focus on what matters and let go of what doesn't. Because I had spent so much time getting caught up in the shit that didn't matter, getting overwhelmed over things that five years down the road, they weren't going to matter in my life, that I needed to make a change. I needed to refocus myself. And that is where the mindset comes in. So if you find yourself in paralyzed states where you just don't know where to start, start by taking a breath. That is the biggest advice I can give you. Take a breath and remind yourself that a lot of this stress will go away soon and it's not going to matter. Also, ask yourself, am I worrying about stuff that hasn't even happened yet? And is there something I can actually do to control the situation or do I need to let go of the situation itself? There are plenty of examples that I can give you because my life is like so freaking crazy chaotic but I will give you the one that I just had. So for example, I had crazy stuff happen with my passport and essentially changing your name is really hard. So if you're going from Miss to Mrs., hit me up because it is not easy. (laughs) But I finally get to the point where I'm changing my name on my passport and it's right before I'm leaving for one of my friend's weddings in Sweden. And basically I go in to do it and a couple weeks before Um, I'm calling and they're still processing it. And then the week of, I'm waiting and there's nothing. I haven't gotten anything. So I'm leaving in less than a week. And then I finally get a notification that they had the wrong form and I had to figure it out. So this is Monday before I was leaving on a Friday. I'm calling every single day and I'm stressing a little bit. And then I realize, I'm like, well, what can I control? And so I control by redoing the form and speeding everything up and calling government people, whatever the heck I was doing. But I couldn't let it keep me from doing the other things. Like I was still needed to reach out to my clients. I still need to like focus on like my dog. Like I couldn't just stop everything and only focus on this one problem because when we do that, we're not helping anything. We're actually creating other problems too, right? So if you are so hyper-focused on the one thing that's not right in your life, you're just going to create more wrong. Whereas if you turn your focus on what you can control and things that you're grateful for in your life, there's going to bring more of that. It is crazy how much your mind can make a difference on that. And that is kind of the approach that I've really been trying to make in my life is because I'm realizing that if I focus on the good in people, if I focus on the good in my life, that is what I feel more of. That is what comes to me more often is the good in my life. And I want that for you. But if you feel like you're stuck in a mindset of negativity, ask yourself, what is causing this? Am I in an environment that is creating more negativity and can I get out? Am I in just a mindset slump where I'm just not, (laughs) I feel kind of stuck, but I don't know how to work through it. And I want to remind you that if you're feeling like you are stuck or you're feeling like in a negative space, nothing's permanent and 
remind yourself you're working through this. Not that you're stuck, that you're working through it. Because I want to remind you that you can actively make changes. You can actively focus on the good. And even when you need to feel some feels and you need to maybe feel feel sad, have a little pity party, that's okay. That happens. But don't sit in it. Work through it. So give yourself five minutes to feel like, oh, this sucks. Like today's not a great day. But then ask yourself, what can I control today? And how can I focus on things that matter and that I can actually like make changes towards instead of focusing on negativity? Because negativity breeds negativity. That is why even in my environment now, I'm very cautious about who I spend my time with, how I spend my time, because if I'm around negative people all the time, they are going to pull their energy, my energy from me. And I'm either going to like, I can either walk away or I'm going to stoop down to their level and feel negative as well. And I don't want that. And I don't want it for you. So if you find yourself in that way, run, run the other way. You need to get away from that negativity. And the mind, coming back to the mind being a powerful thing, when you start to have negative thoughts about your body. Let's just start with that. So if you're feeling negative about yourself and you're starting to call yourself names or pick yourself apart in the mirror or just tear yourself down for different characteristics or flaws you think you have, I want to help you stop that because there is no growth or positivity from being negative towards yourself. Being negative is not going to make anything change. It's just going to bring you down more. So I want to remind you that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You're enough. You are enough. And I'm going to give you what I do when I'm having a negative or overwhelming thought. So this is going to really help you just set up your mindset in a positive shift. So here's what I would do. Basically, when I'm feeling negative or just super overwhelmed, I write it down. Immediately, I write it down. The act of writing it down just gets it out there because if it stays in your head or you stuff it down, it's going to come out somewhere else in your life. And it really forces you to see it by writing it down as well. And the next thing I do is I ask myself, what's the one thing I'm struggling with? So it might be outside of what I just wrote down or it might have to do with what I just wrote down, but what am I struggling with? All right, so I'm going to share with you what I do when I'm having a negative or overwhelming thought. So I'm going to kind of go through them first and list them out. So write them down, pull over if you need to, or I'll just put them in the notes. But first thing I do is when I'm feeling this way, overwhelmed, anxious, whatever, I write it down immediately. The act of writing it down for me just gets it out. Otherwise, if I bottle it up, which I'm not great at that, but I know people that are, if you're someone who is an emotional stuffer and you stuff it all inside, highly recommend write it down, get it out there. Um, It forces you to see it and, and face it. So it can be scary, but again, get confidently uncomfortable, put yourself out there and write it down. The second thing you want to do is ask yourself, about that thing that you're struggling with. So what is the thing above that you're struggling with? Ask yourself about it. And what's one thing that whatever that is, that's making you struggle. The third thing is ask yourself, is it true? So whether it's fear, whether whatever it is, is this true? Is this thought I'm having, this fear I'm having, this anxious um, emotion I'm having, is it true? Or am I making it up in my head? And the fourth thing is see what your answer is to that question of is it true and ask yourself if you're 100% certain that your response is true, then you can worry about it. But if you can't, okay, if it's something about the future or that you're not sure of, then cut yourself some slack and remind yourself that you can't worry about things that haven't happened yet. You need to let it go, especially if it's out of your control. Then the fifth thing is I ask myself, how does how does it all make me feel? So how how am I feeling in this emotion, in this um, whatever struggle that I'm dealing with? How how does it make me feel? The next thing I do, the sixth thing I do is I look at the response. So how I feel, I look at that response and ask myself, do I do I think those feelings will keep me from the purpose I have in this world? So let me repeat that again. Do I think these feelings will keep me from the purpose I have in this world? 
That's a big thing. And then once I've answered that question, I ask myself, what would feeling the opposite of this look like? And that is when I kind of go off on the tangent of writing my vision for what I actually want to happen in my life. And something about the juxtaposition, vocab word, of letting the fear get onto the paper and put everything out there that I'm feeling and then immediately going into, well, if I'm feeling like this is the worst possible scenario that could happen in my life, what would the best possible scenario look like? And then I start writing about that. And it's like, it's really cool because it's creating a positive mindset and it's helping me. I already got the fear out there. I already thought about like what what's the worst thing that could happen. And now I'm able to really envision like what is the best thing that could happen in my life. And when I start doing that, it absolutely shifts my mind and my actions around that because I'm like, how would I how would I show up for myself in this way to create this, to make it happen? And instead of focusing on that negative, I'm focusing again on that positive. Now, that doesn't mean that you just ignore your negative feelings. So when you're feeling that way, you don't need to try and stifle them, get rid of them, anything like that. Embrace them. Don't hold them forever, but embrace them enough to like address them and then start focusing exactly like I said, start focusing on Now, how do I need to show up in order for this best possible scenario to happen? So that is something that I want to challenge you to do for yourself. So if you feel like you struggle to be in that negative mindset consistently, break away from it by honestly facing it dead on. What is the worst possible thing that could happen? Because you're already thinking of scenarios anyways. And then once you've worked through that, be like, is it true that this is going to happen? Probably not. And then start thinking about what what is the opposite scenario of that? The best possible thing that could happen right now for you. And once you start focusing on that and focusing on the good that you want to bring into your life, whew, your life is going to change. You better hold on. Um, and it really is a great reminder that the choice is yours on how you think and believe in your answers to all those questions. So you get the choice of whether you want to focus on that negative mindset that you just addressed or if you're ready to focus on the positive mindset and start taking action. So remember that when you're unsure of what decision to make and when you're worried about how someone interpreted past conversations, anything like that, when you're feeling like you're unheard at work or in relationships or you have fear of getting in the way of accomplishing just daily tasks, just feel like overwhelming almost, take some time to sit in those thoughts and really address them dead on because honestly, if you keep ignoring them, they will come back either in another form or exactly the same thing because it is hard to break those mindsets when you are in that pattern of negativity because we get stuck there sometimes and it's just over and over again we get in that mindset of honestly just not feeling good enough and that's what it comes down to is we're putting ourselves down and in this negative mindset because we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of not feeling like we're enough, but you are enough. You absolutely are. And instead of thinking, well, what if I fail? What if you started thinking, what if I fly? What if I freaking crush this? What if I start showing up fully for myself every freaking day? Can you imagine what your life would be like? It would be a whole lot different. And starting to show up for yourself is the key to really creating that positive change in your life. So if that is what you're searching for, you got it. You just got to start start with that mindset. And that is something that's really been a huge change in my life. And I had to learn it as a young kid and I had to keep learning that lesson over and over again and still to this day. But it really comes back to where my head is at whenever I'm, I'm feeling like I'm in a certain space of anxiety, depression, whatever that is. I have to take time for myself. I have to take step away from everyone else's expectations of me and really focus on my own. And that is the key. That is really what what it takes. So thank you guys again for giving me the space here. I would love to hear your thoughts, feedback, questions, whatever you have, let me know. Also would love to get a review. So review this podcast. And if you give it a five-star review, come on, it's like Uber, give me a five-star and I will give you If you put your um, Instagram handle, I'll reach out to you and give you a free 60-minute coaching session with me. 
60 minute coaching session with me. So go ahead and write up me a five star review. Tell me what you think. Let me know. Let me know your favorite part of this. Also, feel free to do a little screenshot and share it on your story. Tag me in it so I can know it's you. And I will see you next time. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot, support at JagoFit360.com, for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.